Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to today's lesson on immigration globally. And on today's lesson, which is lesson number three, we are going to focus on pull factors, those things which make people want to move to a new country, as opposed to push factors, which are the reasons why people leave their old country. So uh, today's essential question will be, what are some significant effects of pull factors. So we're going to look at three different um, countries slash regions as we go through the lesson today. Um, the first is Europe. Europe is a destination of choice for many immigrants. So on this slide, we're going to look at what pulls people towards Europe. First thing you need to know is that almost all of the countries from Europe are part of the European Union. Um, and that is a big deal because um, in many ways European countries function like countries and in other ways they function more like our states. Um, if you are a citizen of any European Union country, you have a right to live and work in any other European Union country. There are no border controls. Um, you don't need permission. Um, there aren't even stops at the border. You just drive across, um, which is a little bit difficult to comprehend because uh, our situation here is a little bit different. Uh, European countries are also economically among the most wealthy in the world. So because European countries are wealthy uh, and people have jobs there that make them a significant amount of money, uh, if you're living in a part of the world that's poor, that is going to be appealing. Uh, European countries are mostly democratic, stable, and generally welcoming. Um, in the next lesson, I'm going to talk about ways in which that may be changing, but um, you know, most European countries elect their own governments and are responsive to their citizens. Uh, they're stable, meaning they don't have um, excessive crime rates, um, and they are generally welcoming towards immigrants and outsiders, um, as opposed to being fearful of them. Uh, we're going to talk about how that is changing in a little bit, but it won't be part of this lesson. Um, European countries are also safe. Um, like I just said, they have low crime rates and the police forces in European countries are professional. They are not corrupt um, and they are um, respectful towards the populations for the most part. And finally, uh, European countries are seeing as being welcoming towards immigrants. Um, this is starting to change because Europe has been overwhelmed with immigrants, as that picture um, indicates. But Europe is still a very progressive place that is very appealing towards in immigrants um, and is a lot better than a lot of other options that uh, immigrants could choose. I'm going to go ahead and show you some pictures of European immigration here. So this graphic in the upper left is really nice because it actually shows you where immigration into Europe is coming from. And whenever you see that flag with the stars, that is the flag of the European Union. Um, so those are all the European Union countries, although Britain is leaving the European Union. That's an entirely different story. We're not going to talk about it here, but it is definitely a thing. Um, and most of the immigration is coming from uh, Africa and it's coming from Syria. Africa, Syria. Uh, these represent the people coming across on the boat from Africa and the dangerous risks they're willing to take. Uh, these are people literally lined up at the border of a European country trying to get in. Um, it's a pretty serious situation. And if you can read it, this down here actually shows you the percentage of foreign born people in each of those countries. Uh, red being a high percentage, orange being kind of in the middle, yellow not as much, and green hardly any. So 
Uh, hopefully that's big enough on your screen that you can see that because that's actually pretty interesting. So the next time we're going to talk about is our neighbors to the north in Canada. What pulls people towards Canada? Uh, Canada is actually a very popular de uh, destination for immigrants and there are lots of good reasons for that. Uh, the first of them is that Canada has a small population. The entire population of Canada is basically the same as the population of California. Okay, and California is only one of 50 of our states. Although one out of every 10 Americans lives in California, but basically the United States has 10 times more people than Canada. Uh, Canada needs immigrants in order to grow economically. So it's literally a matter of need for Canada. Canada needs immigrants in order to grow. Um, Canada therefore actively encourages people to move there. Um, it is easier to move to Canada than it is to move to most countries because it is extremely welcoming uh, towards immigrants. Uh, Canada has many different languages, cultures, and religions. It's very, very tolerant of outside groups and um, even um, more so than the United States, it doesn't force people to adopt a dominant culture. It, it is very tolerant of them coming with their own culture and integrating that into the fabric of Canada. So Canada actually will pay new immigrants and set them up with a place to live for a period of time. Whereas if you immigrate to America, you're basically on your own. Um, Canada has a system that you plug into that places you, it gives you a place to live, and it gives you a monthly stipend to live off of until you can get established um, and have a job of your own. Established, of course, being an academic vocabulary word. So let's look at some Canadian pictures here. Um, basically what you're seeing here is that Canada makes it fairly easy for people to immigrate there. I'm not saying they say yes to everybody, but compared to other countries, uh, it's very easy to immigrate to Canada. It's much easier to immigrate to Canada right now than it is to the United States for reasons that we will be discussing. And right now we're going to talk about why people move here to the United States of America. Um, the United States is a plural society, as is Canada, by the way. Uh, it's composed of and accepts people from many different cultures. Basically, unless you're Native American, your ancestors are from somewhere else. And that is also the case with Canada. So our entire population is composed of people who at some point in the last 300 years or so came from a different part of the world. That makes us a plural society. Um, although there is a dominant group, that being white Europeans, other groups do have the ability in the United States to rise up and succeed. It's that whole notion of the American dream, that if you work hard enough and uh, you get an education, you can do anything in the United States of America, and that dream motivates a lot of people to come here. The history of the United States is also based on immigration from all over the world, and there are dark sides to that, and some of those dark sides came out in the movie about American immigration that we showed in class, but the fact of the matter is that the United States would not exist and would not be as dynamic as it is if it hadn't um, received wave after wave of immigrants over the years. So basically, the U.S. also needs people to immigrate here because the native population of the United States actually has low birth rates. So if the United States did not actually have immigration, our population would not grow very much or might even shrink because... Americans who've lived here for many generations are having fewer babies, but not the case with immigrants. Um, I'm going to leave that there. Um, please prepare for the next slide. 
So if you can see it, this flag actually represents in a very cool way um, America's international roots. Uh, I thought that was very, very cool. You kind of have to squint to see it, though. Uh, and the whole notion that immigrants actually make America better and make America stronger. I'm not trying to make a political statement there. It's just the historical reality of the United States that, that our success has been based on immigration. In fact, a lot of the most successful executives and businesses uh, in American history have actually been started by immigrants, not by native-born Americans. Not to say that native-born Americans haven't started businesses and been successful, but uh, their disproportionate number are started by businesses. Um, this picture down here represents people being sworn in as citizens after going through the naturalization process, and that's a dream come true for many. Um, and this is just a cool picture that represents um, different cultures blending together, the, the hand of the Statue of Liberty uh, representing uh, the historical welcoming nature of the United States towards immigrants. Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this brings us to the end of our lesson on poll factors. So you know what you need to do. Please write at least a three-sentence summary because we had three left-side questions of what you learned in today's lesson. And with that, this is once again Mr. Blumendahl signing off until next time on the Waldo Middle School Social Studies YouTube Network.